Greyhound Lines, Wikipedia Audio Greyhound Lines, Inc., usually shortened to Greyhound, is an intercity bus common carrier serving over 3,800 destinations across North America. The company's first route began in Hibbing, Minnesota in 1914, and the company adopted the Greyhound name in 1929. Since October 2007, Greyhound has been a subsidiary of British transportation company First Group, but continues to be based in Dallas, Texas, where it has been headquartered since 1987. Greyhound and sister companies in First Group America are the largest motor coach operators in the United States and Canada. Carl Eric Wickman was born in Sweden in 1887. In 1905 he moved to the United States where he was working in a mine as a drill operator in Alice, Minnesota, until he was laid off in 1914. In the same year, he became a hub mobile salesman in Hibbing, Minnesota. He proved unable to sell the car. In 1914, using his remaining vehicle, a seven-passenger car, he began a bus service with Andy Anderson and CAA. He'd, by transporting iron ore miners from Hibbing to Alice at 15 cents a ride. In 1915 Wickman joined forces with Ralph Bogan, who was running a similar service from Hibbing to Duluth, Minnesota. The name of the new organization was the Mesaba Transportation Company, and it made $8,000 in profit in its first year. History By the end of World War I in 1918, Wickman owned 18 buses and was making an annual profit of $40,000. In 1922, Wickman joined forces with Orville Caesar the owner of the Superior White Bus Lines. Four years later, Wickman purchased two West Coast operations, the Pioneer Yellow Way System and the Pickwick Lines, creating a national intercity bus company. The Greyhound name had its origins in the inaugural run of a route from Superior, Wisconsin to Wausau, Wisconsin. While passing through a small town, Ed Stone, the route's operator, saw the reflection of his 1920s era bus in a store window. The reflection reminded him of a greyhound dog, and he adopted that name for that segment of the Blue Goose lines. The greyhound name became popular and later applied to the entire bus network. Stone later became general sales manager of Yellow Truck and Coach a division of General Motors, which built Greyhound buses. Wickman, as the president of the company, continued to expand it so that by 1927, his buses were making transcontinental trips from California to New York. In 1928, Greyhound had a gross annual income of $6 million. Atlantic City, Baltimore Brooklyn, New York City, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C., Connecticut, Boston, Bridgeport, New Haven, New York City, Providence, and Stamford, Las Vegas, Anaheim, Barstow, Claremont, Compton, El Monte, Hollywood, Long Beach, Los Angeles, Phoenix, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, Santa Ana, and Victorville. In 1929, Greyhound acquired additional interests in Southland Transportation Company, the Grey Line, and part of the Colonial Motor Coach Company to form Eastern Greyhound Lines. Greyhound also acquired an interest in Northland Transportation Company, and renamed it Northland Greyhound Lines. By 1930 more than 100 bus lines had been consolidated into what was called the Motor Transit Company. Recognizing that the company needed a more memorable name, 
the partners of the motor transit company decided to rename it after the Greyhound marketing phrase used by earlier bus lines. Wickman's business suffered during the Great Depression, and by 1931 was over $1 million in debt. As the 1930s progressed and the economy improved, the Greyhound Corporation began to prosper again. In 1934, intercity bus lines carried approximately 400 million passengers nearly as many passengers as the Class I railroads. The film It Happened One Night centered on an heiress traveling by Greyhound bus with a reporter. The movie is credited by the company for spurring bus travel nationwide. In 1935, national intercity bus ridership climbed 50% to 651,999,000 passengers, surpassing the volume of passengers carried by the Class I railroads for the first time. In 1935 Wickman was able to announce record profits of $8 million. In 1936, already the largest bus carrier in the United States, Greyhound began taking delivery of 306 new buses. To accommodate the rapid growth in bus travel, Greyhound also built many new stations in the period between 1937 and 1945 most of them in a late Art Deco style known as Streamline Modern. In 1937, Greyhound embarked on a program of unifying its brand identity by acquiring both buses and terminals in the Streamline style. Notable examples of Streamline Modern stations have been preserved in Cleveland, Ohio, Columbia, South Carolina, and Washington, D.C. August 4 1952, in Greyhound's most deadly collision two Greyhound buses collided head-on with each other along the then U.S. Route 81 near Waco, Texas. The fuel tanks of both buses then ruptured, bursting into flames. Of the 56 persons aboard both coaches, 28 were killed, including both drivers, May 13, 1972 near Bean Station, Tennessee, between Knoxville and Bristol, a Greyhound Cena cruiser on a scheduled trip from Memphis to New York City collided head-on with a tractor-trailer truck. The driver of the bus had begun to pass a car. Fourteen people, including both the bus and truck drivers, died. The National Transportation Safety Board determined that the cause of the crash was the Greyhound driver's overtaking maneuver and his failure to avoid the truck. May 9, 1980, a cargo ship collided with the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, near St. Petersburg, Florida, causing a part of the roadway to collapse and causing several vehicles, including a Greyhound bus to fall into Tampa Bay. All 26 people aboard the bus died, as did nine others. December 18, 1990, a Greyhound bus left Salt Lake City for Chicago and became entrenched in a driving snowstorm on I-80. Just short of the Wyoming border, the bus was hit by a semi-tractor trailer that had crossed the median heading the opposite direction. The force of the collision tipped the bus onto its right side and steered it down a steep embankment. The bus slid for 150 feet and came to rest against a fence, about 35 feet below the eastbound lanes of I-80. Seven passengers were killed and more than 40 injured, June 20, 1998. A Greyhound bus on a scheduled trip from New York City to Pittsburgh ran off a road near burnt cabins, Pennsylvania, and hit a truck parked in an emergency parking area. Six passengers and the driver died. The National Transportation Safety Board determined that the probable cause of the accident was the driver's use of a sedating antihistamine and driver fatigue, due to an irregular work-rest schedule. October 3, 2001, 
At approximately 4.15 a.m. local time, a passenger, Damir Igrik, assaulted the driver of his bus, attempting to slit his throat, and causing the bus to crash near Manchester, Tennessee, killing Igrik himself and five other passengers and injuring 32 others. Since the incident occurred three weeks after the September 11 terrorist attacks, Greyhound temporarily suspended all schedules as soon as the company learned of the incident for fear that it may have been part of a larger coordinated attack. After investigation by the company and the FBI, it was confirmed that Igrik had acted alone and service resumed later that afternoon. After the incident, Greyhound bus stations increased security, though not nearly to the same level as airports or train stations. September 30, 2002, Arturo Martinez Tapia assaulted a Greyhound driver near Fresno, California, resulting in two passenger deaths after the bus then rolled off an embankment and crashed. Following this attack, an aisle gate and driver's shield were installed on most Greyhound buses which prevent passengers from having direct contact with the driver when the bus is in motion, even if the aisle gate is forced open. January 23, 2014, Mackel Doniel Morris, who reportedly was hallucinating, screamed everybody's going to die pummeled the driver and grabbed the steering wheel of a bus traveling on Interstate 10 near Tonopah, Arizona, 50 miles west of Phoenix. Twenty-four passengers were injured, including 21 who were airlifted to nearby hospitals. Police credited the driver for keeping the bus upright and preventing it from crossing into oncoming traffic, January 19, 2016 an overnight bus carrying 20 passengers that had departed from Los Angeles the previous night crashed on Highway 101 in San Jose, California, killing two and hospitalizing eight others. Investigators have ruled out mechanical failure, leaving driver fatigue as the likely cause. By the outbreak of World War II, the company had 4,750 stations and nearly 10,000 employees. Wickman retired as president of the Greyhound Corporation in 1946, being replaced by his longtime partner Orville S. Caesar. Wickman died at the age of 66 in 1954. 1914-1930, Early Years after World War II, and the building of the interstate highway system beginning in 1956, automobile ownership and travel became a preferred mode of travel in the United States. This, combined with the increasing affordability of air travel, spelled trouble for Greyhound and other intercity bus carriers. In October 1953, Greyhound announced the acquisition of the Tennessee Coach Company's entire operation, and the negotiations for the Blue Ridge Lines, and its affiliate White Star Lines, that operated between Cleveland and the Mid-Atlantic Seaboard. In 1955, the Interstate Commerce Commission ruled in the case of Keys v. Carolina Coach Co. that U.S. interstate bus operations, such as greyhounds, could not be segregated by race. In 1960, in the case of Boynton v. Virginia, the U.S. Supreme Court found that an African American had been wrongly convicted of trespassing in a whites-only terminal area. In May 1961, civil rights activists organized interracial freedom rides as proof of the desegregation rulings. On May 14, a mob attacked a pair of buses traveling from Washington, D.C., to New Orleans, Louisiana, and slashed the Greyhound bus's tires. Several miles outside of Anniston, Alabama, the mob forced the Greyhound bus to stop, broke its windows, and firebombed it. 
The mob held the bus doors shut, intending to burn the riders to death. Sources disagree, but either an exploding fuel tank or an undercover state investigator brandishing a revolver caused the mob to retreat. When the riders escaped the bus, the mob beat them, while warning shots fired into the air by highway patrolmen prevented them from being lynched. Title II and Title III of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 broadened protections beyond federally regulated carriers such as Greyhound, to include non-discrimination in hotels, restaurants, and other public accommodations, as well as state and local government buildings. Later in the 1960s, Greyhound leadership saw a trend of declining ridership and began significant changes including using the profitable bus operations to invest in other industries. By the 1970s, Greyhound had moved its headquarters to Phoenix, Arizona, and was a large and diversified company, with holdings in everything from the Armor Meat Packing Company, acquired in 1970, Travelers Express Money Orders, MCI, and TMC Bus Manufacturing Companies, and even airliner leasing. Indeed, Greyhound had entered a time of great change, even beginning to hire African American and female drivers in the late 70s. In 1972, Greyhound introduced the special unlimited mileage Ameri Pass. The pass was initially marketed as offering 99 days for $99 or, in other words, transportation to anywhere at any time, for a dollar a day. For decades it was a popular choice for tourists on a budget who wanted to wander across the cities and towns of America. Over time Greyhound raised the price of the pass, shortened its validity period and rebranded it as the Discovery Pass, before finally discontinuing it in 2012. Greyhound acquired Premier Cruise Line in 1984. Between 1985 and 1993, Premier operated as the official cruise line of Walt Disney World with onboard Disney characters. In 1983, Greyhound operated a fleet of 3,800 buses and carried about 60% of the United States intercity bus travel market. Starting November 2, 1983, Greyhound suffered a major and bitter driver's strike with one fatality in Zanesville, Ohio, when a company bus ran over a worker at a picket line. A new contract was ratified December 19, and drivers returned to work the next day. 1930-1945 1945-1983, Expansion, Desegregation, and Diversification By the time contract negotiations with the Amalgamated Transit Union were due again at the end of 1986, the bus line was in the process of being sold to Dallas-based investors. By early 1987, Greyhound Lines had returned to being a stand-alone bus transportation company. Under CEO Fred Curry, a former executive of rival Continental Trailways, Greyhound's corporate headquarters relocated to Dallas, Texas. 1983-2001, Consolidation, Strikes and Bankruptcies 1983 Greyhound Drivers Strike 1986-1990, Spin-Off, Merger, and First Bankruptcy 1990, Greyhound Drivers Strike Early 1990s, Bankruptcy and Antitrust Cases In February 1987, Greyhound Line's new ownership and the ATU agreed on a new, three-year contract. In June 1987, Greyhound Lines acquired Trailways, Inc., the largest member of the rival National Trailways bus system, effectively consolidating into a national bus service. 
Greyhound was required by the ICC, in their action approving the merger, to maintain coordinated schedules with other scheduled service operators in the U.S. Between 1987 and 1990, Greyhound Line's former parent continued to be called Greyhound Corp., confusing passengers and investors alike. Greyhound Corp. retained both Premier Cruise Lines, and 10 Greyhound brand non-bus subsidiaries, such as Greyhound Leisure Services, Inc., and Greyhound Exhibits. In March 1990, the former conglomerate parent changed its name to Greyhound Dial. Because Greyhound Dial's switchboard continued to get questions from misdirected bus passengers, it ultimately changed its name to Dial Corporation in March 1991, to eliminate any association with bus travel. In early 1990, the driver's contract from 1987 expired at the end of its three-year term. In March, the ATU began its strike against Greyhound. The 1990 driver's strike was similar in its bitterness to the strike of 1983, with violence against both strikers and their replacement workers. One striker in California was killed by a Greyhound bus driven by a strike breaker, and a shot was fired at a Greyhound bus. During the strike by its 6,300 drivers, Greyhound idled much of its fleet of 3,949 buses and cancelled 80% of its routes. At the same time, Greyhound was having to contend with the rise of low-cost airlines like Southwest Airlines, which further reduced the market for long-distance intercity bus transportation. Without the financial strength provided in the past by a parent company, the strike's lower revenues and higher costs for security and labor law penalties caused Greyhound to file for bankruptcy in June 1990. The strike would not be settled for 38 months under terms favorable to Greyhound. While the National Labor Relations Board had awarded damages for unfair labor practices to the strikers, this liability was discharged during bankruptcy reorganization. 2001, Trailways laid law mergers and bankruptcy. At the end of 1990, the company had $488 million in assets and $654 million in liabilities. During bankruptcy, the company ultimately had to address claims for $142 million in back pay for its striking drivers and $384 million of pre-bankruptcy debts owed mostly to the investor group led by Fred G. Curry. According to the company, upon emergence from bankruptcy in August 1991, Greyhound had shrunk its overall workforce to 7,900 employees, and trimmed its fleet to 2,750 buses and 3,600 drivers. In August 1992, Greyhound cancelled its bus terminal license agreements with other carriers at 200 terminals, and imposed the requirement that Greyhound be the sole seller of the tenant's bus tickets within a 25-mile radius of such a Greyhound terminal. In 1995, the United States Department of Justice Antitrust Division brought suit to stop this practice alleging that it was an illegal restraint of trade, bad for consumers, and reduced competition. In February 1996, the United States won its case, and Greyhound agreed to permit its tenants to sell tickets nearby and permit its tenants to honor interline tickets with competitors. Greyhound's total revenues in 1994 were $616 million. In the late 1990s, Greyhound Lines acquired two more members of the National Trailways bus system. The company purchased Carolina Trailways in 1997, followed by the intercity operations of Southeastern Trailways in 1998.
Following the acquisitions, most of the remaining members of the Trailways system began interlining cooperatively with Greyhound, discontinued their scheduled route services, diversified into charters and tours, or went out of business altogether. On September 3, 1997, Burlington, Ontario-based transportation conglomerate Laidlaw Inc. announced it would buy Greyhound Canada Transportation ULC for US$72 million. US dollars. In October 1998, Laidlaw announced it would acquire the U.S. operations of Greyhound Lines, Inc., including Carolina Trailways and other Greyhound affiliates, for about $470 million. When the acquisition was completed in March 1999, all of Greyhound and much of Trailways had become wholly owned subsidiaries of Laidlaw. 2002-2007, Laidlaw Years After incurring heavy losses through its investments in Greyhound lines and other parts of its diversified business, Laidlaw Inc. filed for protection under both U.S. and Canadian bankruptcy laws in June 2001. Naperville, Illinois-based Laidlaw International, Inc. listed its common shares on the New York Stock Exchange on February 10, 2003 and emerged from reorganization on June 23, 2003 as the successor to Laidlaw Inc. 2007 present, first group ownership. After this bankruptcy filing, Greyhound dropped low demand rural stops and started concentrating on dense, inter metropolitan routes. It cut nearly 37% of its network. In some rural areas, local operators took over the old stops, particularly in the Plains states, parts of the upper Midwest and the Pacific Northwest. Starting in 1997, Greyhound had faced significant competition in the Northeast from Chinatown bus lines. By 2003, more than 250 buses, operated by competitors like Feng Hua and Lucky Star Bus were competing fiercely from curbsides in the Chinatowns of New York City, Boston, Philadelphia, and Washington. DC. When operating on intercity routes, the Chinatown buses offered prices about 50% less than Greyhounds. Between 1997 and 2007, Chinatown buses took 60% of Greyhounds' market share in the Northeast United States. The New Greyhound Addressing Overbooking Services launched since 2010 On February 7, 2007, Scottish Transport Group First Group purchased Laidlaw International for $3.6 billion. The deal closed on September 30, 2007 and the acquisition was completed on October 1. 2007 Although First Group's interest was primarily the school and transit bus operations of Laidlaw, First Group decided to retain the Greyhound operations and in 2009 exported the brand back to the United Kingdom as Greyhound UK. Today, Greyhound's 1,229 buses serve over 3,800 destinations in North America traveling 5.5 billion miles on North America's roads. Almost immediately after acquiring the carrier, First Group sought to improve Greyhound's image and create what it called the new Greyhound, by refurbishing many terminals, expanding the fleet with new buses, refurbishing old buses, and retraining customer service staff. Greyhound also started a new advertising campaign with Butler, Shine, Stern and Partners aimed at attracting 18 to 24-year-olds and Hispanics back to the new Greyhound. The new Greyhound also saw the introduction of a refreshed logo and a new navy blue and dark grey livery for buses, 
which was rolled out to the nationwide fleet over several years. As the older buses were repainted they were also refurbished, receiving wireless internet access, power outlets and new leather seating with increased legroom. During its ownership by Laidlaw, Greyhound had come under criticism for its ticket sale practices, specifically that although tickets had departure dates and times printed on them, Greyhound did not always stop sales after all the seats were purchased for each departure. In periods of high demand Greyhound added additional sections, but the threshold required to trigger an additional section varied, often leaving passengers behind to wait for the next bus departure. Shortly after the sale to first group closed, Greyhound began a program in select markets, where riders could reserve a seat for an additional $5. However, only a limited number of seats could be reserved and the fee would have to be paid at the terminal's ticking counter, even if the ticket was bought in advance online. The problem was further addressed in 2014 when Greyhound rolled out a new yield management computer system. With the new system, Greyhound is now able to more closely manage the number of tickets sold for each departure and dynamically adjust pricing based on sales. Although the amount of overbooked buses has been sharply reduced with this new system, Greyhound still does not explicitly guarantee a seat to everyone with a ticket. The next major change made by First Group was the launch of a brand of premium bus routes called Greyhound Express in 2010. This came at the same time that competitor Megabus launched its third and fourth U.S. hubs at Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. and began to emphasize express services. Greyhound's express routes make fewer stops between major cities, use only newer model or refurbished buses, have guaranteed seating, and tickets start at $1. Expansions in Greyhound's network and upgrades in its services in the early 2010s were at least partly a competitive response to Megabus. In 2014, Greyhound CEO David S. Leach claimed a profit of $73 million on revenues of $990.6 million, and attributed the company's success to a mix of changing urban populations, less attractive driving options, and competition that was benefiting all carriers. In July 2015, the company announced that it would open terminals in Monterrey and Nuevo Laredo, Mexico, and begin services between the two cities with onward schedules to existing terminals in Texas. In so doing, Greyhound claimed to be the first American bus company to operate an intra-Mexican route. In September 2015, Greyhound announced expanded service in Missouri and Kansas shortly after Megabus announced that it would be ending service to several cities and college campuses. Greyhound operates 123 routes serving over 2,700 destinations across the United States. Greyhound's scheduled services compete with the private automobile, low-cost airlines, Amtrak, and other intercity coach bus companies. Greyhound Express is a low-cost express city-to-city -city service that makes either no stops or fewer stops compared to a traditional route. Fares start at $1 and seating is guaranteed since buses are not overbooked. Greyhound Express was designed to directly compete with low-cost carriers like Megabus and the Chinatown bus lines. The service began on September 28, 2010, with several routes radiating from New York to major cities in the northeastern United States and rapidly expanded to serve destinations in the Midwestern, Southern, and Southwestern United States. Currently the Greyhound Express network has expanded to serve 930 city pairs in nearly 120 markets, with further expansion planned. 
Greyhound Express routes are assigned new or refurbished buses that are equipped with Wi-Fi, power outlets, leather seats, and extra legroom. In many stations Greyhound Express customers can take advantage of dedicated waiting areas, separate from passengers traveling on other Greyhound services or other carriers. Some stations also board passengers onto Greyhound Express buses using numbers printed on tickets. This number is assigned in the order in which the ticket was purchased, which means that passengers who bought their tickets earlier get to board the bus and choose their seats earlier. Greyhound Connect is a connector service that operates shorter routes to take passengers from stops in smaller, rural cities to stations in larger, urban cities. Buses are either from Greyhound's existing fleet or smaller, mid-sized buses. Currently the Greyhound Connect service is offered in Alabama, Arkansas, Colorado, Maryland, Missouri, Montana, North Carolina, and Utah. Some routes are operated using funds from the Federal Formula Grant Program for Rural Areas from the Federal Transit Administration. Greyhound Charter Services arranges charter buses for customers using Greyhound's fleet of motor coaches. Unlike many smaller charter operators, Greyhound is able to operate nationwide and offer one-way services, due to its network of routes. In addition to providing transportation to individual groups, schools, and event operators, Greyhound Charter Services is also approved by the military and the government as a charter bus vendor. In addition to carrying passengers and their luggage, Greyhound buses also carry packages. Through Greyhound Package Express customers can book expedited cargo shipping door-to-door -door or station-to-station. The company says that shipping by bus offers a cost-effective alternative to other ground or air carriers for same-day delivery. Lucky Streak is Greyhound's brand for routes between cities with casinos and other nearby cities. All fares are sold as open-ended round trips, with passengers allowed to return to their origin at any time. On the Atlantic City routes, Casinos offer special bonuses to Lucky Streak passengers. There are currently three Lucky Streak routes. Quicklink is Greyhound's brand of commuter bus service that runs frequently during the peak weekday commuting hours. In addition to one-way and round-trip tickets Quicklink offers monthly and 10-trip passes. Passes and tickets on Quicklink are flexible and passengers can board any bus with available seating. Currently the only Quicklink route is between MT. Laurel, New Jersey, and New York City. Routes were formerly operated from Sacramento, California to the San Francisco Bay Area and Macon, Georgia to Atlanta. Bold Bus is Greyhound's brand of non-stop and limited stop, premium level bus routes. Fares start as low as $1, with the lowest fares depending on how far in advance a trip is booked and demand for the trip, with fares increasing for trips booked closer to departure. Bold Bus uses newer model coaches that are equipped with Wi-Fi, power outlets, and leather seats with extra legroom. The first buses started running between Boston, New York City, and Washington, D.C. on March 27, 2008. In the northeastern U.S., Bolt Bus was originally operated in partnership with Peter Pan Bus Lines, but this arrangement ended on September 27, 2017, with Greyhound continuing the brand alone. Bolt Bus expanded to the West Coast in May 2012 with a route in the Pacific Northwest. Service was expanded again in October 2013 with a route between the two largest metropolitan areas in California, Los Angeles, and the San Francisco Bay Area. 
A stop in the city of San Francisco was added in December 2013 along with a new route between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Greyhound is one of the largest operators of Amtrak S Thruway Motor Coach service even though the two companies are competitors in some markets. Amtrak issues rail passengers a ticket for a regularly scheduled Greyhound route that connects with their train, often with buses making a stop at the train station. These Thruway Motor Coach routes allow Amtrak to serve passengers in areas without rail service and offer passengers in areas with rail service a wider selection of destinations. After the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks, Government scrutiny of train and airplane passengers substantially increased, but bus passengers are largely free of it. Baggage is seldom inspected, and cash customers do not require identification. Greyhound says that security wands have been deployed on buses, but they do not appear to be routinely used. In February 2013, in partnership with DriveCam, Greyhound deployed video cameras across its entire fleet to increase safety and driver compliance by combining data and video analytics with real-time driver feedback and coaching. At some major Greyhound stations, passengers are subject to open bag checks, ticket checks, and pat-downs with metal detectors. Greyhound operates 1,232 motor coaches produced mainly by Motor Coach Industries and Prevo. In an effort to improve its image, between 2007 and 2014, the company aggressively purchased new coaches and refurbished existing ones. As of 2016, the majority of Greyhound's fleet has the navy blue and grey neoclassic livery on the exterior, wireless internet access, leather seating, and 120-volt power outlets at most seats. Greyhound's coaches have one fewer row of seats than the industry standard, giving passengers additional legroom. All buses purchased since 2009 have three-point seat belts installed. The majority of the Greyhound fleet consists of the following models. Greyhound serves over 2,700 destinations across America. There are 230 Greyhound-operated stations in most major cities, where passengers can catch a bus and buy tickets. All stations have Greyhound branding and are staffed by company representatives. Some stations stand alone, while others are a part of larger transportation centers with a Greyhound ticket counter and waiting area. In small to mid-sized cities Greyhound buses stop at either locations operated by an agent or at a curbside stop. At most agent-operated locations, the staff can also sell tickets. Greyhound buses also stop at stations belonging to partner bus companies. At most of these locations, representatives are able to sell tickets for Greyhound routes. Below is a list of major incidents and accidents on Greyhound buses and buses of subsidiaries in the United States. Services Greyhound Express Greyhound Connect Greyhound Charter Services Greyhound Package Express Special Routes Lucky Streak Quicklink Other Brands and Partnerships Bolt Bus Amtrak Thruway Motor Coach Security Fleet Stations and Stops Notable Incidents and Accidents In Popular Culture Films Songs Theater